here we go. This is one day's work. We had two chippies in and yeah, it basically flies up. Here's where the Juliet balcony goes. That's not bad for one day's work to get all of this up. But yeah, in terms of ceiling height, this is probably one of the biggest lofts I've been in. 2.48 meters from the floor to the ceiling. And obviously there's a little bit of build up, some um, insulation, plasterboard, all that. And then obviously for the floor, the, the boarding and then the carpet, whatever we go with, um, that is obviously going to reduce the head height a tiny bit. But yeah, you're looking at basically 2.4 meter ceiling height in a loft, which yeah, it's just insane. You see, you see some lofts that come up for sale and basically the door, which is gonna be between those two pieces of paper, the top of the door frame is resting on the ceiling, which it just, I get it. Some places have particular rules and regulations, which mean you can't raise the ridge height, but yeah, it just doesn't look right. Whereas now with this amazing ceiling height, I mean, it's, it's a proper master bedroom. If you're wondering why I've put this, the level there, um, it's so I could see where the end of the bed would be if you put it over towards that side of the room. You, obviously you can move the bed around wherever, but I quite like to kind of visualize how I want to lay a room out by just marking it all out. Uh, so yeah, that's where the end of a bed would be there, which then gives you loads of room when you walk in through the front door, open the door up, walk into your room. Uh, from about, I'd say from the bottom of the skylights, you've got, you'll hit your head. So try and think of the room as basically being from about this point here out is where you can walk around really comfortably. All of this, yeah, is, co is compromised space. And we're going to be having a small wall coming up from this steel here. And then it, that's all going to be then storage in the eaves. But yeah, we're gonna push the wall as back as far as we can. So it's not stupid because obviously if you had the wall right there, I mean, unless you're a mouse, you're not gonna be able to walk around there. But yeah, that gives as much square meter as in the bedroom as possible. And basically that, that, that is everything. It's just trying to make your room look as open as possible and as big as possible. But yeah, I'm over the moon with this. Um, also the framing of the Juliet balcony is exactly so you can see the London eye at night. Um, so if you did put the bed over towards that side, so your head would be over there when you're sleeping, obviously getting into the bed, you've got a little bit of a, a reduced head height, but you don't really need that much space over a bed. Um, you obviously need enough so it's comfortable, but yeah, you could probably have the bed facing this way and then at night, looking out through there would look insane. So yeah, just like I said, remember door getting in um, to the bedroom is obviously between the pieces of paper. So from there to there, that's where your doorway is gonna go. Um, and then the wall drags out along here, kind of where I've put this piece of wood. Um, and then you've got your landing here that I'm walking on. And now I start stepping down and then the staircase is going to be coming down here, 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 here. And then all this wall gets removed and then the landing is gonna be like half into that room. Um, and then I'm gonna discuss a little bit about the pod room because there's really exciting stuff going on here. Um, but I'll just go over the bathroom again here. So if you kind of see where these markings are here and like kind of about there, I've actually moved the piece of wood. Um, that is then going to be the door to the ensuite and we're going to be having the door stepped in so it's flush along this wall here. Seriously, you're gonna to need to have some vision for what I'm about to say because I know it's quite hard to imagine it, but trust, just bear with me. Doorway is going to open out this way. So imagine you pull the door open there and we're gonna have the wall stepping like this, which then is going to then allow you to have the bath on an angle facing this way which then allows you to get into the bath really because you've got to think about the head height and obviously if you need to step into a bath you obviously need the space to get in and out of the bath um so having the bath on an angle really does help and i think it's all going to look pretty cool latest drawing that i've done is i'm going to have the toilet um around here and then because obviously the landing is running back there the shower is going to be actually 
out here to that wall there. It's very hard to imagine that, but yeah, the shower is going to be set back with like a glass pane coming out here from the wall, which is then going to give loads of space to then have maybe two sinks or maybe one really big wide sink mirror up on the wall. Uh, and then we've also got a skylight coming in here, which remember you've got that depth of a skylight. Velux, whatever you call them, they're not actually Veluxes we get because um, they're too expensive. So we just buy ones that are the, a different brand, but made in the same factory as Veluxes. Um, it's way cheaper. Like I said, get into that in a future video. But that setback of a Velux is actually going to make the room feel even bigger. All the light coming in. Yeah, this is a really decent size ensuite. If you're wondering what all this is, this is the building regs, which um, uh, my brother and me did because remember, we don't like paying for stuff, so we just do it all ourselves. <laughs> um, because the only time that is free is your own. And yeah, paying someone else to do this when we can do it ourselves. Yeah, we just thought, I might do a video on building regs because if you do, if you are proper hands-on DIY, you get a lot of it done yourself. It's really good to do the building regs because then when you're subbing out different jobs to the chippies, you know it all. Obviously you can pay someone to do the building regs and then you just kind of like read through it all and make sure that you properly know everything you've got to do. Um, but yeah, it's really useful to just know exactly what's going on in your house. So when you're talking to the chippy, uh, the, the, well, if you don't know what a chippy is, it's the carpenter, uh, and you're subbing out these particular jobs and they ask you a question, you know it like that. Um, and you essentially then are the project manager and you're also the labourer. Um, but yeah, what else? So over here, I've mentioned that Velux there, we're actually having a strip skylight going in up here over the kind of like the, the landing and the corridor going down the stairs. You can actually see the exact position of it, which is that 400 wide marking there. See there? That is how wide it's gonna be. And it's kind of gonna be just like a rectangle running along here, letting loads of light down um, into the stairs, which then leads onto the pod room. It's really good to now see from this perspective, the landing is going to be running kind of to about where that, I think, oh yeah, I laid a piece of wood so you can see. The landing, because remember all this wall's coming out, it's really hard to imagine stairs, but it's gonna be running to that point there. And then that is the landing. On the right-hand side, you've got the ensuite with a little outcrop there, which I think I'm gonna put, offset the sink into that space. And then the rest of that is going to be an amazing bedroom with an ensuite. And if you haven't watched um, my planning permission video, oh, it's kind of like I'm walking the plank here. No, that's definitely not a smart thing to do. Yeah, if you haven't watched my plan videos, bedroom, ensuite, master bedroom, ensuite, down below that, another bedroom, another bedroom, underneath that is a family bath. And then below this bedroom, you've then got the exact floor plan again, another bedroom and non-suite. Although it is gonna be a slightly smaller bedroom because the landing actually eats more of the room away um, on the floor below this. Uh, but yeah, definitely haven't made it easy for myself. We did the plans all ourselves and we managed to get planning permission to raise the ridge height, which no one has done on this road, which means we've got the biggest loft space. Uh, and even just like this with the Juliet balcony, stepping it in like that, um, that creates another sense of space because instead of it just being flat there with a skylight, pushing it out means it just makes the room feel so much bigger. When you've got skylights, then there's an extra weight on the rafters. So you need to double them up to support that weight. So that's why you'd see two there, two there, and two there, and again there. And then obviously the same will be there and in that skylight. But yeah, I mean, it is flying up and I can't wait for this to be fully weatherproofed. Uh, and don't worry, I'm gonna explain all the thinking behind why we're having toilets in particular places because there's a lot to think about, like where the waste has got to go and all of this and how, and that kind of then determines where we are having the en suites and things like that. Okay, I'll add more to this video uh, when the rest of this is done and then I'll run through it all. I need to finish building up this wall uh, because this building surveyor came around and he was really happy with all the steels, all of that, he said it was great. He was just concerned about the old wall. It was built with an old method. So he wants me to put some ties in um, and yeah, I'm gonna finish bricklaying that up. So yeah, I'll check back in with you in like a week's time when this is hopefully all finished.
So this is what the pod's looking like at this stage. Obviously, that's gonna be the window. All of this is going to be covered in these plastic tiles here. Um, on the front, we've actually used um, real slates, not plastic ones, because we just thought they looked nicer. So that's all gone in. And looks super nice. And yeah, honestly, I can't get across on camera the space that you get in this room. Like these are 1.2 meter skylights or veluxes, whatever you call them. And I'll get into the cost of them in the breakdown video, which will probably be the, be the next video because we're kind of at like the midpoint here. Like there's still a lot that needs to happen. All of this needs to be covered in the EPDM, which is like uh, what you use for flat roofing. All of the mansard needs to be slated still. The skylights need to be installed. Um, there's going to be one here and one there over the ensuite. Uh, because it, if you remember, the layout down here is big bedroom, a wall coming out about to there, then a long, and then that's going to just have a toilet, a sink, and a shower. Um, and then that same ensuite layout is going to be on the bedroom that's below that, the one you can see through the floor there. These skylights are just going to look insane, like with all the plasterboard wrapping around it. Yeah. It's just going to look sweet. As I said, I'm always going to be super open and honest with everything and how is it how it's going uh this has been an absolute nightmare so then we had to get another set of chippies in and yeah building inspector came around yesterday and was super happy with everything my head only hits it about here so that is tons of headroom and then obviously over this side is about here i'm then walking into the ensuite and the wall for the ensuite is going to be running along here so yeah the bath we can push really far that way and like i mean you're standing up all the way to here so yeah it's just an immense amount of space for a lot jeez Oh, I think I need it. Maybe I need that. Not okay. I think these are like 150, 160. But then it's single clutch. And... I mean, I'll 100% break it. And as they're quite rare, I don't... I don't think I could ever have that because I'm a bit of a chav and I'll probably just do launch controls and blow it up in about 30 seconds. So this is probably more me, but then I don't know. So you got this, which is just rich. This is rich. That's equally rich. And then you've got not one, but two. This is actually insane. I mean, oh, look at it. That is all carbon there. I swear you can only buy these if you get allocated one and you need to buy pretty much every single Ferrari there ever is to get a special. Which is just seems, I need it. What specs this? Look at the carbon. I mean, oh no, that's what I want. I want that. I'm sure some of you will have a heart attack over that. But I just, I'm not, I like classics. I'm just not, not into them as much as modern cars. Like, I mean, over there, I'm sure some of you have an absolute heart attack. And here, but I'm more, with a Wraith. Are Wraiths good? I think if I put bars on the top, I can happily get some OSB board, but then I don't think I could get Baton in it. So Wraith's not one. Whereas this, I just think this is pretty practical, you know? You can wedge loads of stuff from Selco in there. 